defendant, Matthew D. Rausenberg, is guilty. Of it was a case that shocked Olentangy local school parents. Matthew Rosenberg will spend the rest of his life in prison for molesting elementary students. There was competition in that classroom to see who got to rub his back or who got to sit in his lap. Columbus parents Chris and Stacy complained to Arrowhead Elementary Principal Nadine Ross about what their second grade daughter was going through. That complaint happened five years before Rosenberg's arrest. Because of the sexual nature of these crimes, 10 Investigates is not identifying their child. What did Principal Nadine Ross tell you? That that's just his way of relating to children. Everybody loves him. Everybody He's loves him. He's a great Mr. teacher. R. And that's just his style of teaching. This family says they were one of the lucky ones. They believe the affection Rosenberg showed their daughter didn't include her being sexually violated. Whatever the second grader experienced is still giving her nightmares. My child shut down after that year. The prosecutor who convicted Rosenberg says the delays in stopping him victimized even more children. He appeared to be grooming these girls and a number of the girls up to five every year, um, as far back as we could tell. Luke Carlisle replaced Nadine Ross as principal of Arrowhead Elementary. He gave Rosenberg a written warning for inappropriate touching of students in 2012. This is what Olentangy local schools told 10TV about their internal investigation. In that instance, when that was reported, that was when we did do uh, an official investigation and it resulted in employee discipline, written warning, placed in his file. And we did counsel the former teacher to be very clear about the boundaries that uh, he established with his students. But 10 of us gates discover that report was never passed on to state regulators. Rosenberg was supposed to be more closely monitored by the principal. That didn't happen. Principal Carlisle's personnel report shows he was flagged for rarely monitoring teachers with only two classroom visits in one semester, the critical period just before Rosenberg's arrest. Court records would later show that when he was supposed to be monitored, four more students would be violated. Both principals, Nadine Ross and Luke Carlisle, did not respond to our requests for an interview. On April 6th, Olentangy Local Schools agreed to an interview with 10 investigates to explain their actions. April 7th, three families sued the school district and its past two principals for failing to act on parental warnings about Rosenberg as early as 2007. On April 11th, the district canceled its interview with 10 investigates. But this problem goes much higher. State law says that schools must only tell the Ohio Department of Education if a teacher is accused of a criminal act or if a teacher is being fired or resigns. That means teachers with questionable behavior can move from school to school with parents and districts being none the wiser. The Children's Defense Fund finds that disturbing. If the complaints aren't being um, treated with the most concern and the utmost priority, then there needs to be another set of eyes. Because Rosenberg was so popular despite at least four parental complaints against him, Arrowhead's principals failed to stop this predator teacher. The Ohio Department of Education had no clue parents in Olentangy local schools were pleading for help. If there's no separation of employment, so the person hasn't resigned or there's um, no non-renewal, then they would not have a mandated report to the department. But Ohio's failure goes beyond the state's borders. Brian Z was a band teacher at Bishop Watterson High School. Last June, school officials fired him for unprofessional conduct and reported him to the Ohio Department of Education. Z was still able to get a teaching job in Washington State, even though his new school did a thorough background check. That's because Ohio doesn't have a system that flags teachers guilty or accused of inappropriate behavior not considered criminal. His new school only learned about the allegations when Z was arrested in Washington for the Ohio case. In Miami County, there were complaints about teacher Tim Shook being involved with inappropriate behavior with students. Shook left the district and got a job with the Riverside Music Department in Logan County where Logan County parents would have no way of knowing about the complaints. Three years later, Logan County's prosecutor charged him with sexual battery for abusing students. Ultimately, Miami County also charged Shook for abusing students as well. But even if parental complaints get to the Ohio Department of Education, chances are nothing will be done. In 2014 alone, ODE received more than 9,000 requests to investigate teachers. 
they investigated just one out of nine of those complaints. And out of those, the state took action in only around two-thirds of those cases. The state defends an investigation rating, saying the majority of those cases are applicants with non-felony criminal records not worthy of a full investigation. Or we may have um, some that come in anonymously and they don't identify a person. So some of those are not investigated. We took our findings to the leader of the Ohio House Education Committee. As a state leader, how do you feel about that? I, not good, obviously. Uh, what it makes me feel like we need to maybe obviously make some changes to the system, make sure that the, the data is properly tracked. Even if the legislature clears up the teacher complaint and investigation system, that still leaves Chris and Stacy with the haunting belief that they did not do enough to protect their child. I kind of feel guilty that I didn't do something more because when, as a parent, if you have this feeling inside, you need to say something because look what happened. But you did say something. I did and I trusted them that they would do the right thing by my child and all the others and they didn't.